Hey there, little mama. If you are a mom and you have kids, then you got to know something. Sports are part of your life. And if you live in Texas like I do, or in Florida like my guest, you really understand it. Actually, I think it's like this way all over the country. We love our sports and sports are so good and they're really good for our kids. There are things there that, that like on the baseball field that you really can't really learn anywhere else or you can learn it faster. And so we do love our sports. But as a mom, we need to have our balance between our family and the sports and how many sports and how soon the sports and all of those things. And if you're thinking like I'm thinking, you're thinking, what the heck? How am I supposed to know what to do? Well, today on the Moms Like Us Do Things Like This show, we have an expert. An expert baseball mom, not only did she do all of it, she even is the wife of a baseball, major league baseball coach. So this woman knows some things and we are going to talk to her in just one minute. Don't go away. <music> Welcome to the Moms Like Us podcast, where moms just like you learn strategies, systems, and skills through expert interviews and real life insight designed to take your marriage, mothering, and home to the expert level. Hi, I'm Mona Corwin, your mom mentor and host, author, international speaker, and the founder of the Moms Like Us Academy. I've been coaching moms for over 25 years, and I have some really good news for you. Motherhood isn't a natural talent. It's a skill and you can learn it. You can crush it at motherhood instead of motherhood crushing you. So let's get to today's show. Hey, my guest today is Billy Jouse. And I just want to tell you, she's a good friend of mine and you're just going to love her. Now, Billy is really known for her um, her biblical knowledge and her ability to help us through the regular parts of our lives and understanding it and just living a full Christian life. And her podcast called The Family Room actually is one of my favorites. And I just love the way that Billy connects with her audience. But behind the scenes or <laughs> out in front of the stands, Billy is truly a mom extraordinaire and a wife extraordinaire in the realm of baseball. So you're going to get to know her really well. Her book, Detox, no, Distraction Detox, is really amazing. And I know that you're going to love that too. But she also has another, she has a bunch of books and she has a new one coming out. We're going to ask her all about those. And I'm going to bring my friend Billy up and we are going to chat because you are really going to love meeting Billy. Hey, Billy. Hello, Mona. Thank you so much for having me on here. It's weird hearing <laughs> extraordinaire, you know, expert, but uh, expert and extraordinaire after 36 years of professional baseball and raising three boys during it. I think I got this covered. I think, I think we, uh, you know, uh, we also, Billy and I have a friend and uh, her name is Rhonda Shoup and she has a thing called old ladies know stuff. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. We do. We well, know so it that from the bad point of view when we made mistakes and we know things when we did them right. <clears throat> but the point is we're supposed to share, right? It is. And the funny thing of it is, is what I tell people when David and I, my husband and I started in professional baseball, I was the age of the players' wives and girlfriends. And 36 years later, they're still 22 to 32 and I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a lot of life dealing with a, a great group of women over the years, for sure. I love it that um, God's word is so faithful and true and time. It's just, it's above, it's above time. When he created Titus 2, did he really know that baseball moms were going to need like a Titus 2 mom? Did yeah. he really know that um, we would, that Mona, the mom mentor, would have to go online to reach all of their girls? Like, yeah, he did. And yeah. Titus 2 still lives. And for those of you that don't know Titus 2, it's basically the older women teaching the younger women. And that's what moms like us do things like this is. And so today we're going to talk about being a sports mom. Billy, real quick, tell them about your three, uh, your two other books and your new book that's coming out. 
Okay. Yeah. So I have two books. The first one is Making Room, Doing Less So God Can Do More. And that was about the external distractions. And in that book, there was a really small part about the internal distractions that a lot of people wanted to talk about. So I'm like, oh, I'll dig into that and figure out what that means. And let's just say the Lord took me on quite a journey (laughs) that led to the second book, which is Distraction Detox. And that one's about removing the emotional barriers that hold us back from realizing God's best in our lives. And then the Lord's like, okay, you've done all that work. Now let's talk to people about how to love each other, wherever God puts us, with whomever he puts us with. So my next book coming out the end of April of 2024 is going to be Baseball Family. And it's just, it's going to be nine core qualities of loving others in unique situations. Where has God placed you and who has he placed in front of you and how can you love them like he loves you? And that's, um, it's not just for baseball moms or no. baseball wives and no. none of her books are and her podcast yes. is all biblical, just like the things that you've seen that she yeah. just discussed. I know that the moms are sitting there, especially women that like baseball and they're like, hmm, so who is her husband? And oh. <laughs> go. The king go ahead, of all, the, the king serving the king. David and I look at baseball as our mission field, and God has put us in some incredible situations. We've been in pro ball 36 years. He spent 18 years in the major leagues as a bench coach. Um, and then I say, after all those years in 2021, he was a bench coach for the New York Mets. And Pete Alonso asked him if he could throw to him in the home run derby during the all-star game. So I say David's claim to fame as he threw to Pete Alonso in the home run derby of 2021 and they won. But my boys and I, because I we have three boys that grew up in the game and the boys and I laughed about afterwards that everything was hashtag 64 year old Dave Jouse. So we're like, if it's hashtag 64 year old, it's hashtag stud. Cause you gotta be a stud to be throwing in the home run derby like that. So yeah, David's been around a long time right now. He, well, we're in October and in the baseball life in professional baseball, October is the hot seat because the regular season's over. Some teams are going to the playoffs, but a lot of people are getting fired. (laughs) So we sit around right now going, we're with the Washington Nationals right now. But when I get off this call, we could be with a different team. We never know. It's just part of baseball. Um, I do believe we'll be with the Washington Nationals again next year, but he's in a position as a senior advisor. So he um, is an advisor for the general manager and the farm director. That's awesome. And yeah. He has a smile that absolutely <laughs> is as big as the brim on his hat. He is a sweet guy. He's really a he really good guy. But boy, during games, you don't see that smile as much as you do the intensity. You know, that's <laughs> totally it. You know, when I first met you, <clears throat> I remember you kind of talking, telling your story about your husband and your three boys. Yeah. And can you tell us? the um or tell the girls the prayer that god refused to answer for you i mean we yeah. pray we tell them pray yeah. pray prayer works yeah. prayer works but it didn't work for you for some you know time. yeah raising three boys in the game uh, and also you know david look david and i look at baseball as our mission field so for me in the mission field of baseball god has given me these girls to love on and to mentor and to live life with believers, non-believers, you know, crazy living, straight, straighter living than I live, you know, all these different personalities from different areas in the U.S., the, you know, Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Mexico, Asia. I mean, it is a, it is a melting pot of people. And the thing that I always see is how hard this life is on women, right? It's tough. And people want to throw out, well, you make a lot of money. Well, not everybody makes a lot of money, number one. And number two, I don't care how much money you make. If you're away from your husband the majority of your year, it's tough. If you're raising your kids the majority of the year alone, Mm. it's tough. And single moms will understand that, that it's just a tough place to be. So I prayed for years and years, Lord, I know my boys love this game, but please do not let them work in baseball because it's going to be really bad on their marriages, on their relationships. Like, 
Lord, please just let them work in opera or the musical theater or business or something. And let's just say God failed me. I'm joking, guys, but God <laughs> failed me. And our oldest son is an area scout. He sees amateur players in high school and college for the San Francisco Giants to hopefully draft them into professional baseball. Our middle son is a mental conditioning coach. He has a sports psychology degree and he reads, writes, and speaks Spanish fluently, part of our living in Venezuela and Dominican Republic. So he oversees their Latin American population and he, all of them do a great job, but Charlie's heart is just into making sure that um, these Latin American players integrate into the U.S., into baseball in the U.S., into living in hotels with running water, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but he, yeah, he does a great job with that Arizona Diamondbacks. And then my baby boy, my baby, y'all, I don't care how old your kids are. <laughs> they're still your babies when they are adult men um, or women. Um, but my, our youngest son is the head pitching coach at Penn State University. Um, and so he's the youngest pitching coach in the power five, uh, baseball school, baseball, uh, conferences. I lost that word for a minute. Um, so he's a college coach. So that's where they all are. They're all in baseball. Two of them have very strong relationships. Our oldest son is engaged, getting married next year. I pray for her daily. Um, but it takes a special breed to be into this. Our middle son does not have a girlfriend, so I'm still taking applications. He tells me I can't choose his wife, but, <laughs> but you I'm send still, the pretty ones his way, right? <laughs> I'm looking for that Spanish speaking strong woman that can handle this life. And then our younger son has a wonderfully supportive girlfriend that has been through some ups and downs in this game with him already. He was a volunteer coach for two years. And I'm like, Katie, man, you got a boyfriend that ain't making money. How, why are you still with him? And she's like, I know he's going to be fine. And that's the attitude you need when you're trying to climb the ranks of, um, of being in baseball. So now I, I know that um, you did some extra special things to, cause your boys all love Jesus. They all see this is a mission field. They aren't prideful. I'm sure they dealt with pride. We all well, do. Girl, don't make them out that perfect. Yeah, they, you know. are, they are. They, are, they have we're had all... their struggles. We have had our fights. We have had our doubts. We have had our roller coaster rides. Well, how did you do it? Like, what did, I mean, obviously they would have been really good when they were kids. And we're talking to moms with kids. Yeah. So, like, how did you keep their pride in check when they were good? Yeah. So one of the things being in professional baseball, you can get caught up in the big league life. You know, my husband was a first base coach for the Boston Red Sox when the boys were little. So they didn't know anything other than being out and about and people knowing who dad was or, you know, people bringing them birthday gifts to the ballpark. And they, they've never seen these people in their lives, but somehow they knew that it was my kid's birthday, whatever it would be. Um, so from an early stage, I started with the kids that if you're going to know the best team, best player on our team, who at that point was Pedro Martinez, a pitcher, right handed pitcher who we had known for a long time, but he really reached his peak with the Boston Red Sox. And he, you know, he was very famous. And I said, I said to my husband, I said, if they're going to know Pedro and love PD in the clubhouse, they're going to also know what the janitor of the bathroom out on the concourse name is. And they're going to ask him how his day was. And they're going to ask him what he thought about the baseball game rather than just Pedro. And it's so funny. One of the funniest stories I have about my kids, and there, I have so many stories we could spend all day, but one of the ones that sticks out the most is the boys had a little league game and we were living in Boston when David was with the Red Sox and the little league game was in the earlier day. And we went to the ballpark and after the game, they're, you know, in the clubhouse area and Pedro walks up and is like, Hey, how was your game boys? My game was this. And Pedro is one of the most humble Christian men, wonderful human being. So it wasn't prideful. It was just the way that he was asking and, but the boys are telling him and then they see literally the janitor that cleans the floors and the bathrooms come out. And they ran up to him, Mr. John, Mr. John, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you should have seen my play today, blah, blah, blah. They blew off 
Pedro Martinez to go talk to the janitor. And in that moment, like, that's the heart I want my kids to have. I never want them walking around with the pride of, huh, I'm Dave Jouse's son. You know, I'm friends with players. Like, I wanted them to love the least of these. And I don't mean that, that the janitor was the least of these. But when you're looking at the hierarchy of what people see in a baseball stadium, I wanted my kids to love they had, you know, they had Lynchy, the French fry lady. She actually was the beer lady, but she gave them two French fries. So <laughs> At they least would she didn't run up beer. <laughs> no, she would have never. But they'd run up to the beer stand, Lynchy, Lynchy, hey, hey, we just played baseball, or we just whatever went to a birthday party, whatever it was. And Lynchy's like, "That's awesome. You want some fries?" You know. So it was like they knew the security guard at the at the um, parking lot that we parked in just as well as they knew Pedro Martinez or the manager of the team at that time. Um, you know, they knew, I wanted my kids to know people for who God made them, not who society made them. Oh, whoa, that's, that's the key. That's, that's, the, key. The, that's yeah. the quote. So yeah. how did you do that? Good, because By works. making sure that I did. Yeah. yeah. This, By this making works. sure I did. Oh, that's the answer. Whoa. The answer is to make sure that I did. Because if I was only, you know, sparkly eyed to the big league player and the big league wife and didn't love on the college girl that was a security on our row or on our, you know, on our section or didn't love on or help uh, uh, someone that was sweeping paper up on the concourse, if I didn't bend over and hand them the paper that just fell out of somebody's hand, or if I acted, we call it big leaguing. If you're big leaguing people, which means, oh, I'm a big leaguer, you're not that's inappropriate. So honestly, the way that I did it was to emulate it myself and let it come from my heart, just not a to-do list that I did in front of my kids. It was naturally what we did. Yeah. And this is, this is why I'm saying her podcast is so good because that's the kind of stuff you're, you're going to, you're going to learn to help yourself. And so as they were so you, that is how they were dealing with other people in that realm. Mm -hmm. So working with my moms, we're not there, but there are kids on these teams that are really good for this season and yeah. they're acting prideful or your kid's doing it. And you're so embarrassed yeah. that he has a haughty attitude. Can you speak to yeah. that? Yeah, you know, it goes back and Mona, I'm not, I don't want to ever blame a mom. There is no shame here, girls. I messed up as much as I did good. But, you know, some of the things that we wouldn't allow our kids to do was have the best bat, have the best glove, have the best of everything walking on that field. You know, one of the jokes we used to make was people would walk up with a $500 bat and a $250 glove and not get a hit that day and make four errors. Start simple, start simple, make your kids earn things. Don't just give it freely because just because Johnny's got a new $500 bat does not mean that my DJ needs a $200 bat or $500 bat or a $200 bat. And the funniest thing is I sort of went to extremes on this because I never wanted the people on our little league teams. We lived in the city of Boston. We had kids on our, our team that were, food insecure. I mean, there was, you know, we had kids on our teams that lived in the projects that I carted around and fed or other moms on the team carted around and fed because they wouldn't get it otherwise or buying them a pair of shoes because they wouldn't have a pair of or, you know, cleats. If, if they didn't, if we didn't help them, they wouldn't have cleats, whatever it was. So I never wanted my kids to walk on the field with the best of everything. So I went to the nth degree of, I'm not buying you a bat. You use the team bat. And I know things have changed. My kids are in, you know, late twenties, early thirties. Now everybody has to have their own bat because of travel teams and changing teams and all that. But my suggestion would be, do not buy them the best bat until they're showing you they can hit with the best bat. Whoa. Whoa. Do not buy them the best glove. That's in, you know, they're all, there's some, I was on this one thread the other day on a social media platform and there's this glove that is multicolor. I think it was like a $1,500 glove for an eight year old. What? I'm like, I am sorry, but That's mama, you got too much money. 
you need to start giving some of that money away. And that's the way I showed it to my kids was I'm not buying you that $500 bat because we're going to buy five bats for the team at $100 each. And we're going to give them to the team so that everybody can hit. Everybody has a good bat. Because a $500 bat is not going to make Johnny hit any better than Johnny's hitting with a $100 bat or a $20 bat, whatever you can get cheap at a sporting goods store or at, you know, what's a, um, Oh gosh, what's the store you can go to that they they have old equipment? Oh, um, play it again, sports. Play it again, sports. We would go there and buy a bunch of stuff and bring it to the team and donate it to the team. Wow. And that was my way of saying to my kids, "Hey, buddy, you are not going to ever sit above someone else." And my kids were pretty good. My twelve, my well, my middle son when he was in t-ball got kicked out because he was hitting that bar the ball too hard. And so as a four year old, he was put on a six year old coach pitch team and he was hitting the ball too hard there and the, and the coaches were afraid of him. So he was moved up to an eight year old team. And he's four. And he's four and he was big. I mean, he was really tall. They had projected him to be six, eight when he grew up. I mean, he was enormous. When he was 12 years old on an all-star team, the coaches stopped the the ball game and wanted to check charlie's birth certificate oh you're kidding it happened so many times with him i can't even count i kept his passport with me at all times really some of these dads and moms got really mouthy oh look at him he's on steroids oh his parent his dad's a big league coach they put him on steroids Oh Parent, my gosh. your mouth can start forest fires. Your words can create criticism and, and demeaning talk in your children. Whatever you're chirping from the stands, your kids are going to chirp in the, in the dugout. What, whoever you're bad mouthing leaving a game, your kid's going to repeat it when they're at the ballpark. Wow. That is so, such good advice. No, you know, we're going no mom to, shame though. I am going to say no mom shame, but I'm going to learn. Mom learn. Mom learn. Yeah. This is the time Absolutely. we learn. This is, this is, uh, the mentors. I mean, this is what we're about. We're showing you because we did this. I did this. And I'm a challenger. So sorry, Mona, I go up on things like, Hey, you got to get it. You got to do it. Come That's on. part of my, my podcast too. I'm a challenger. I'm going to challenge you with each podcast to take a step in a better direction. And if you are in the Moms Like Us Academy, um, we're going to be doing another little segment with Billy, and we're going to be talking about specializing in one sport, what age, training, extra coaching, when the coach becomes the authority over the kids instead of you, moms in the stand, the good, bad, and the ugly, and the ride home. So we're going to be talking about those in the academy. And if you're not in the academy, we have experts like Billy that really tell us how and why. And our podcast is just to give you some help and some inspiration. But the academy is where you're going to get the big help. And if you're not in the Moms Like Us Academy, there'll be a link somewhere that you can do it. So join us. But um, Billy, I want you to, we're closing in on our time. I want you to tell me what looking back and if you had to tell your younger self something i know your prayer wasn't answered <laughs> but if you had to tell yourself something that would have made a difference in your life you wouldn't have struggled so much with something or whatever when it has to do with baseball and being a baseball mom what would that be you know i think the biggest thing would be that just because your kid makes a mistake or does something that's not so great and i'm not just talking about in the talent of baseball but in character in who they are that it doesn't mean they're going to be like that forever it doesn't mean that that's going to ruin the rest of our li their lives they make mistakes they do things to to make them responsible in asking for forgiveness apologizing to someone um i think taking it a little less serious than I did because I felt like it was the end of the world. Oh my gosh, this is going to be his character for the rest of his life. Now there are some things my kids did that I'm like, Oh, that's still who they are. But the, 
the really the ones that concerned me the most i wish i had been a little calmer a little more relaxed a little more understanding that god's got this i, I you know i'm going to teach my kid everything he can i can and he's going to do what he knows to do later on and i pray that it's all good and like i said my kids have stumbled over the years we've had some issues over the years but I see God in every step of their lives. And I see how God has guided them, even though they didn't allow God to guide them. I see how he's guided them, them over those years. So I think I would just say, go back. If I could go back, I'd, I'd be a little more less, I'd be less worried about the things that were going on in their lives and really turn them over to Jesus and let him take control of it. That is so good. Billy, thank you so much thank for being you. on our show. Tell me, um, well, not tell me, I know. I know where to get you. <laughs> tell everybody where they can find you. We know about the books. Hey, do you have your book there that you can hold up? I do. I have it. I brought it up here. I actually, you can find me on my website and it's my name, Billy, if I can get this camera thing right. There we I go. Billy there dot com. Yeah. That's such if a you go to billyjouse.com, you can actually take the distraction detox quiz which will help you identify um, your emotional toxin that's holding you back. But when you find it out, it's not like, oh, you're falling to fear. It's you're a fear fighter. How are we going to get out of this emotional toxin of fear or doubt or shame or guilt? So no, I've never taken that, Billy. I oh, never take it. I'm telling you, sometimes when I'm when I feel like I'm struggling about something, I'm like, what is going on? I go take my own quiz and I'm like, oh yeah, that's it. Like it just gets me. All right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to overcome that battle with fear. I'm going to overcome that battle of doubt by taking a step into it. I call it a fear fighter, doubt destroyer, and shame shatterer. And we can step out of those. Yeah, we can. And on Instagram? On Instagram, Billy Jouse everywhere. My name is so unique. Just Billy Jouse. You'll find me Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and my website and then the family room come join me in the family room um just a quick the family room in baseball in major league baseball is where the wives gather to wait for our husbands to have baby showers to cry to hold each other up and that's what i want my family room to be the family room is where we come it's a safe place to come and talk about fake family friends and a little bit of baseball because that's where my life is <laughs> Right. And it's great. Never Y'all get out. It. Y'all will love it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. Just love you. Thank you. Hey there, little mama. I, I know I don't even have to hope you've enjoyed this. I know you have. Because sports are really on our heart and we want our children to grow in all areas and not just their ability. And when we start looking at baseball like Billy looks at baseball. We're going to see our children growing in grace and goodness and character. And I hope that you will continue to look to Jesus for things to show up, even in baseball. And like I said, you can find more about what Billy had to say. She's our expert in um, the Moms Like Academy, one of them. And I hope that you will come on over there and share this podcast with someone else so that more moms just like us because you know moms like us we do things like this we help each other out so i will see you next time on moms like us do things like this bye for now and recording hi i hope you liked this episode of the moms like us show and if you did i hope that you'll share it you'll share with another mom friend because you know moms like us do things like this I also hope that you will check out the Moms Like Us Academy, where we take ideas like we've been talking about on the show, but we go deeper. We just don't get inspired and think, ooh, that's a really good idea. I think I want to try that. We actually learn how to do these things and why we need to. And then you know what? You have Mona, the mom mentor, and other master moms that teach the master classes in there. They come alongside and we do, we don't leave you alone. We help you implement and really, truly change your mom life into the mom life you've always wanted to have because motherhood isn't a natural talent. It's a skill, sweetie, and you can learn it. So go and check out the Moms Like Us Academy today and find me when you get there and say hi. Bye.